the ninth annual Peace and Dialogue Awards and the celebration of Niagara Foundation's 10 years of service to Chicago. My name is Mignon Sanuda, the Director of Communications and Member Relations for the Niagara Foundation. Our MC tonight is James Joniga. James is an Innovation and Insights Consultant at Slalom Consulting, as well as a former Tribu Chicago Tribune reporter who has covered innovation, the Middle East and the Midwest, and served as the Trib Nation Community Engagement Manager. Please join me in welcoming James and enjoy your evening. Thank you. On behalf of the Niagara Foundation, let me welcome you to the 10th annual anniversary, uh, 10th anniversary gala, I'm sorry, of the Niagara Foundation and the Niagara Peace and Dialogue Awards of 2014. When you conjure a mental picture of Chicago, you think of its neighborhoods, infamous gangsters, or worse, our winters. People call Chicago the second city, but over time, the city of big shoulders has grown from another Midwestern city into a global city. We have a record high level of international business and tourism. Immigrants come from around the world and they decide to settle here. This means that without traveling to a different country or even out of one of our own neighborhoods, and welcome to mine, by the way, we have the ability to get to know those who are deeply committed to ideas that seem foreign to us. We can learn to communicate with those whose first language is not our own, and we have the chance to do more than just tolerate our differences. Diversity can enrich all of our lives. We must promote global fellowship while also deepening understanding between the cultures that make our great city great. That's the story of the Niagara Foundation, and it's why we're here tonight. We're here to honor an impressive educational institution and two remarkable organizations. All three are dedicated to promoting peace, understanding, the community, and the ability to help us understand and appreciate each other. These honorees have established relationships that bridge barriers, and in doing so, they have not only helped us understand and appreciate each other, but they have also inspired us to do so more deeply and appreciate the city and the world that we live in. Niagara is pleased to honor them tonight, and we'd like to thank them for participating in a milestone of its own, Niagara Foundation's 10th anniversary. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before I invite Dr. Sharif Soydan to the podium for the opening remarks, I'd like to leave the stage to an incredibly talented young boy for a little music performance. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Karim Al Zahabi.
And now, Dr. Sharif Soydan, President and CEO of the Niagara Foundation, will have to follow that. Please help me welcome Dr. Soydan to the stage for the opening remarks. Dr. Soydan. Good evening to everyone. Dear friends, it's wonderful to be here with everybody. And thank you, James, for the introduction. What a joy. What a great place. What a great people here. In my hometown, which is Bursa from Turkey, uh, when people ask about uh, historical places, if, if, if you see a mosque, people say, great mosque. <laughs> the name of the mosque is great, Ulujami. If you see a mountain, you wonder the name of the mountain, and you say, great mountain, Uluda. So people, people are always great. So as Niagara Foundation, we need to be great to be your friend. Thank you for our being our friend here. We have every reason to be excited about the gala dinner. Tonight, we are celebrating a decade of promoting social cohesion by fostering civic conversations and sustained relationships between the people of different faiths and cultures. Thank you for joining us in this special occasion. During the 10 years, do you know the most frequent questions to us? How we established and why Niagara? Now, I'll give you the answer. Please do not ask anymore. <laughs> the Niagara Foundation was founded in 2004 by a group of Turkish-American businessmen and educators in order to realize the vision of their spiritual leader, a Turkish Muslim scholar, Mr. Fethullah Gülen. The founders of the Niagara Foundation envisioned an institution that could bring together people from all walks of life in order to celebrate diversity in a shared society. They named the organization after Niagara Falls. Of course, we know Niagara Falls is in Buffalo or Canada, but the meaning it carries is important for us. Their two great lakes become more magnificent together than they could be separately. The Niagara Foundation employs the Niagara Falls as a metaphor to underline the importance of the cooperation and understanding among diverse groups of people. We may be separated by ethnicity, religion, race, or color, but we all experience both happiness and sorrow as we are all human beings. When you talk about Niagara in 2004, it's about two men, Kemal, and some of you remember, and Hakan, one computer, one desk in this place. Over the last 10 years, Niagara Foundation has grown from an office in a basement. It's like an Apple story, like Steve Jobs. They grow from the <laughs> garage, we grow in the, from the basement. So to a 22 branch organization in nine Midwestern city states, 40,000 subscribers to the programs, and hundreds of forums and lectures, the distinguished network of local and global leaders we have accumulated over the years is a testament to the growing need for diverse international perspectives. This anniversary is an excellent opportunity to reflect back on all that Niagara has accomplished over the past 10 years and to make plans for the future of our organization. We are committed to developing a more just society through dialogue, more robust programming, fostering even more partnerships, and nurturing our intimate ties to the community. We believe citizens who share this value are part of the solution for a more peaceful Chicago and a more peaceful world. We believe in creating a truly welcoming and intellectual space and providing everyone a seat in our heart and in our space. I'd like to extend my sincere thanks to all of you. I'm very lucky to be a part of a wonderful team of people, dedicated and hardworking men and women who have dreams, dreams of a peaceful world. As divergent as we are, we can live together in peace and harmony. We have among us our executive and our advisory board members, and co-chairs of the program, our great friends and premier Dan McCaffrey at Burke, and 34 more 10th year anniversary committee members of the gala and sponsors of the program. And our staff, branch directors, and interns and volunteers, my colleagues, Hilmi, Hakan, Yasir, Ayşe, Mert, Minion, Rana, Merve, Fatih. 
Without him, I wouldn't be here today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For an, for an absolutely extraordinary job. If you don't mind, I know these are so humble people. Please stand up. Our executive and advisory board members, co-chairs and committee members of the 10th year gala, and sponsors and our staff and branch directors, please stand up. I cannot thank enough for your gracious work. We also congratulate this year's awardees of Peace and Dialogue Award. You represent one of the most important motive forces for change in today's world, the struggle for peace and dialogue around the world. My sincere thanks go to all our award recipients for their inspiring works, University of Chicago Booth School, Chicago Innovation Awards, Greater Chicago Food Depository, and I want to ask one more big applause for them too. So tonight, I just pose a question to you. What does Niagara Foundation mean to you? What do you feel when someone talks about the Niagara? I've collected some of the responses over the years. Interfaith engagement, service or his met in Turkish, hospitality, open platform, coexistence, bridge builder, trusted convener of dialogue, mutual understanding, diverse alliances, a thought leader. Here is my response for the Niagara Foundation. I came to Chicago in 2004. I left my country. I left my family. But even one single day, I haven't felt or been treated like a stranger. You know why? Because of you. Scott, Marcia, Paul, Bob, Dirk, Azam, Michael, John, Anne, Ahmed, Dan, Ed, and others, you became my brothers and sisters. Thank you so much. I always consider the Niagara Foundation as the Niagara family. To me, Niagara is about the people. Thanks to all of your support and becoming a part of the Niagara family, I'm honored to stand here for you, with you, to look forward to the future that we must reach together. Thank you and have the most enjoyable night. Mr. Fatula Gulen, who is not able to be, is not able to be with us tonight. Uh, he is the honorary chair of the evening, and his life is the inspiration for the Niagara Foundation. He has sent a letter that he wished to be read tonight, and to read that letter, I'd like to invite to the stage Scott Alexander, a professor at Catholic Theological Union and a board member of the Niagara Foundation. Scott. Good evening, everybody. I have the great honor of reading this letter from Fatila Gulen. Before I do, I just wanted to make a remark about the incredible energy that comes from his teaching and that's manifest in what we're doing here this evening. Um, the beautiful performance we heard by our violinist, our superb violinist, Karim, and the achievements of the honorees whom we are honoring this evening are examples of what can happen when the potential, the God-given potential, uh, in each human being is unlocked and released a potential that can transform the individual lives of those people, but touches and enriches the lives of so many more. Fethi Le Gulen is a man, a great spiritual leader, who realizes that there's a seamless connection between one's devotion to prayer, fasting, almsgiving, and the service to others that enables each and every one of us in interconnectedness and interdependence to have our human potential unleashed and unleashed on the world for transformation. For Fatih Le Gulen, this is his met, this is service, and this is the way 
that human beings are called to give glory to God. And it's because of these teachings of his and their manifestation in what we're doing tonight and the way they have touched my life that I am so deeply honored to stand before you and read his words. Dear members of the organizing committee, scholars, community leaders, ladies and gentlemen, you have gathered here to celebrate the dedication and exemplary achievements of individuals and organizations who have demonstrated strong commitment to serving their communities. As you all know, the Niagara Foundation offers Peace and Dialogue Awards every year with the aim of promoting positive change and fruitful conversation. In my understanding, one of the purposes of these awards is to offer our gratitude to God for sending us such heroes. Another purpose is to encourage others to follow the example of lives committed to serving humanity. I believe one can talk about two types of people in the world, conformists and non-conformists. By conformists, I mean those people who suffice with adapting themselves to the existing norms and conventions of their societies. Nonconformists, on the other hand, try to adapt the societies to perennial values and to beneficial new developments. Their innate thirst for breaking new ground can only be satiated by moving humanity one step further. Therefore, one might be allowed to argue much of a society's progress is due to these nonconformists. They can be scientists who harvest knowledge and grow science so as to enrich all human life. They can be progressive people who seek out new narratives and ways to strengthen the future of their immediate environments. Or they may be caring hearts who take the initiative in nurturing the minds, souls, and bodies of those who are in need. I applaud these nonconformists and thank God for having them among us. Sunil Kumar, Dean of the Booth School of Business at the University of Chicago. Tom Kuzmarski, founder and co-chair of the Chicago Innovation Awards. Kate Mayer, Executive Director and CEO of the Greater Chicago Food Depository. I offer my thanks and congratulations to all the guests who accepted this invitation in the name of friendship and who have braved the challenges of this busy time in Chicago to celebrate God's heroes of love. One final word needs to be said about this auspicious occasion of the 10th anniversary of the establishment of the Niagara Foundation. I would like to offer my sincerest congratulations and heartfelt wishes to the Niagara family for all their hard work on the path of dialogue and respect, their uncompromising dedication, unyielding optimism, and admirable deeds of volunteer work since their inception have helped cement a spirit of friendship and understanding within Chicago and beyond. Their work has proved that it is only with such unquenchable enthusiasm that we can create bulwarks against hatred and start healing our deep-seated wounds. I offer my wishes of health and blessings with my deepest respects, and I apologize that my health prevents me from being among you to share this evening's joy. Rest assured that I will be there in thought and spirit, inshallah, God willing, M. Fatula Gulen. Thank you, Scott. The Niagara Foundation is one of the newest members of Chicago, but as longtime Chicago interfaith activist Reverend Stanley Davis once said, what a partner. Many of you know this organization closely enough that for some of you, this relationship is beyond a friendship. For many of you, Niagara is a family. We have a special story to share with you. Let's watch. The idea for the Niagara Foundation first surfaced in 2002. 
the handful of Turkish American businessmen, educators, and community leaders. These founders were guided by the ideas of Fenton and Gulen, who created a more cohesive society through dialogue and sustained relations between people of different cultures and faiths. Two years later, 2004, they brought in two young idealistic Turkish guys, Kamal, a former teacher of English from Turkmenistan, and Hakan, a flamingo guitarist from Istanbul implement the vision. Operated out of the basement of a house in the Plains with a couple of desks, a computer, a landline phone, and a fax machine. Kamal and Hakan admitted to having an inkling of what to do, but as for how to do it, they didn't have a clue. On the advice of one of the businessmen, they went to the nearest church where the Methodist minister was hesitant at first about their idea to hold a dinner in a spirit of tolerance, dialogue, and love. On their second visit, he reluctantly said yes. A handful of overexcited young Turkish families brought homemade food to share with rare church members, most over the age of 65. This quickly became the template for the work of the Niagara Foundation. Approach other churches and synagogues in the area. Hold as many dinners as possible. Become friends with your neighbors. One thing led to another, and that same year, an educational intercultural trip to Turkey was organized for local religious leaders, made possible by the same businessmen who had founded Niagara. These religious leaders experienced the rich history and culture of Turkey. They learned about the origins of the work of Hizmet, the Turkish word for service, the movement that had inspired these same founders and early pioneers in Niagara. The trip proved to be a bonding experience for these Chicagoans, who returned home to become a veritable who's who of interreligious dialogue and cooperation in the metropolitan area. In 2004, the first annual Niagara Friendship and Dialogue Dinner was held at the Hyde Chicago. At the 2006 dinner, the first Peace and Dialogue Award ceremony, recognizing the work of influential individuals and cutting edge organizations, was held, honoring those who excelled in community service, education, civic leadership. 2006, with the help of generous community support, Niagara moved their office into the downtown loop, expanding the scope of the programmatic agenda and public presence. In September of that year, the popular lunchtime public affairs forum series was launched. Drawing on the inside and expertise of prominent government, corporate, and media officials, opinion makers, academics, diplomats, clergy, and other city leaders. Expounding on every topic imaginable, from education to the economy, to human rights and gender issues, to matters of faith and values. In October of 2007, an annual reception at the state capitol was organized in Aiken policymakers and special guests to engage in civic dialogue while enjoying food, music, and art from a variety of diverse cultures. Under the banner of sharing the faith, Niagara sponsored week-long celebrations held during religiously significant seasons to give the Chicago public a window into the diverse worlds of the three Abrahamic traditions. In 2009, the first Midwest branch of the Niagara Foundation was established. More branches followed, either organized or round up, or in the merger of already existing like-minded organizations under the same roof. Niagara now supports branches in 22 cities, located in Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, and Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, Ohio, and Wisconsin. In 2012, the Niagara Foundation created three distinct centers that continue to exemplify all the ways in which the organization reaches out to unique communities through hospitality, educational enrichment, and networking. The Center for Public and Global Affairs engages public officials as well as civic and business leaders active in the community in public discourse and partnership. The Center for Cultural Exchange and Interfaith Collaboration hosts interfaith gatherings and intercultural trips to Turkey. The Center for Academic Affairs works in collaboration with universities to involve the academic community in the conversations 
at Niagara facilities. Today, the Niagara Foundation is served by a cadre of professionals known for their spirit, generosity, and hard work. Joined by dozens of committed interns, board members, advisors, and volunteers. As a longest standing member of the staff, Hakon has seen it all. From the humble beginnings in that basement office with an inkling of what to do, to a vibrant and proven civic partner that knows how to promote social cohesion in the heart of the U.S. This is how it works, Hakon says. You seek to serve God and humanity. With each new initiative, you learn something. With each new encounter, you gain a friend. With each new challenge, you have the opportunity to make a difference. For the Niagara Foundation, it's quicker. One thing leads to another. 